Aside from uh, fly fishing and, and things like that, was there ever a time when you set out to do something different with your life, or did you know that you wanted to be in this industry for a very long time? I always wanted to be an actor, always, from the time I was a little boy. But that's not what I went to school to do, uh, or the business that I originally got into when I left school. Um, I was in the broadcast news business, um, doing radio and television news. I started in Chicago and moved around the country to a bunch of different cities and, and um, wound up in San Diego working at a news talk radio station as morning news anchor. And I, I also had kind of a little side voiceover career there as well. And, and I'm a ventriloquist and I can imitate airplanes flying over too while I'm speaking at the same time. Uh, and my and I heard about a, t a television movie that was shooting in San Diego. Um, they were looking for some guy to play a detective. I thought, hmm, I could probably do that. Probably look like a detective. And I went to my agent, my voiceover agent, and I said, can you please get me an audition for this TV movie? And she said, no. No? What do you mean, no? She said, you're a, voice, uh, you're a voiceover person. You're not an actor. Oh, well, don't ever say that to a voiceover person because I don't think there's a more elevated form of acting than voiceover because you only have your voice. I keep touching your microphone. I'm sorry. You only have your voice. You only have one, one way to, to create this great texture of a performance. Anyway, she said no. She wouldn't send me to the audition. I begged her and I begged her and I begged her and she finally said, oh, all right, I'll send you to the audition, but if you don't book this, don't ever ask me again. And I said, okay. And so I went and I booked the role of this detective in this silly, back in the days when they used to call them movies of the week. And uh, it was my very first job on television. I got to work with Linda Gray and Linda Pearl and Kent McCord, who I just saw yesterday over at my voiceover uh, agent's office, I love Kent, uh, and Ernie Lively, who is my detective partner. Ernie's such a great actor. Uh, and I was, you know, terrified. It was my first time ever on a television set, and it was awful. It was nerve-wracking and horrible, and I, I think my performance was just the awful. It was ho horrific. Um, but then I went to audition for another one and I booked that one and another one and I booked that one and, and finally I thought well if I want to play the game I'm gonna have to really live where the game is being played so I moved from San Diego to Los Angeles and haven't looked back since then. Of course I've, I've had to, I had to have a day job for the first couple of years. Um, what did you do? Oh wow. I sold Lincoln automobiles, Santa Monica Lincoln Mercury. I worked as a maintenance guy at a marina in uh, Marina del Rey at an apartment complex in Marina where I was constantly having to unplug drains that some of the tenants would pour candle wax down, not knowing apparently or being smart enough to realize that you don't pour candle wax down your drains. Um, I sold shoes. That was horrific. Uh, you know, you do what you have to do to put food on the table and meet your obligations. So, What about the voiceover work? Did that continue once you got to L.A.? Because now you're even more immersed in the industry. Um, yeah. Um, I was doing a fair amount of voiceover work until about five years ago when it sort of started to drop off a little bit, only because I, I became much, much busier on camera. Um, and wasn't able to get to auditions. But that has sort of now changed because the technology of being able to audition from wherever you are on your smartphone and having it sound comparatively really good um, has all changed and you're able to do that now. So um, the voiceover stuff is picking back up again. And, and, uh, and I, another thing I think is important is to know how to do more than one thing. Be, you don't have to be a master of all trades, but be a jack of a few. Um, voiceover stuff, um, uh, on-camera stuff. I happen to 
be an expert in a very peculiar skill called an ear prompter. Um, it's a, a little wireless receiver you wear in your ear and you record pages and pages and pages of script uh, onto a micro cassette recorder and you wear a little transmitter around your neck and so you turn it on and you just follow what you're hearing you re repeat what you're hearing two or three or four words behind what you're hearing and you can you don't have to memorize anything you can go pages and pages and pages and stuff so um, I, I do that in fact that's how I did Funny or Die Presents we shot 13 episodes of this show in one day and the only way, because they didn't have, they couldn't afford a teleprompter, so the only way you couldn't memorize that that volume of material, uh, so I put it on my ear prompter, and we got through thirteen shows in one day, and they loved me. Yeah. So learn how to do more than one thing. I think that's important too.